This is a follow-up to the safety cutter test that I did in another video, as well as the elimination rounds that were separate videos in and of themselves. This is my top five uh, safety cutters for rope bondage, uh, shibari, kinbaku, whatever you want to call it. Um, why they are my favorites, and also what to look for in a safety cutter, uh, just in case you want to find your own way, or if there's a fancy new toy on the market that you would like to evaluate. Um, the five that I've recommended are here arranged according to price. The first pick, the Klaus, uh, are here on this list specific, specifically because of the price. They are the cheapest option. They are a good budget option. Uh, they cost, I think, under $10 or right around that $10 mark anyway. They are a mid-range shear oriented around EMTs and emergency responders, so they're that kind of shear. Uh, they were the best performing out of all of those kinds of shears that I tested. Uh, other good brands that I found were like Madison Supply, uh, and I think the Prestige did really well as well. Uh, brands to stay away from are North American Rescue, uh, AD, ADC did not do well. You can see the video for the full list, uh, but those are two probably the more common ones that I don't recommend. So very good budget option uh, is the, is the, the Klaus. The Easy Cut Trilobite, uh, this one here, this is a scuba diving oriented uh, utility blade using uh, cutter. Uh, they, they would call it a dive knife. Um, it is essentially a long blade. Oh, I've, I've got the focus lock on. Let's take the focus lock off. Um, they're essentially a long blade protected by this kind of U-shaped uh, guard such that rope goes in and it's forced into a U-shape because that guard is actually kind of hollow in the center. It, it's very difficult to kind of see inside, but there's a recess. Um, cuts it. You're using it sim similar to you the way you would a knife. Um, they are my overall number one recommendation, I think. Uh, took a little... They surprised the shit out of me, just frankly. Uh, I bought them just out of a curiosity, and they just outperformed my expeditions totally. I like these because you can cut through a lot of rope at once, in one swipe, um, because the blade is replaceable, and because it's very sharp. They even cut the am steel, and uh, I've, I've gone through a blade just testing them out. The blades last a long time. Uh, and they don't cost a lot, so it's a very good option. It's an option where you could test the knife out on a blade, swap the blade out, and you know what your cutter is capable of. Uh, the third set option is the X Shears by X Shears. These are my number one recommended shears. They are created by a nurse. They are very EMT oriented. They're basically this, just beefed up to be more uh, permanent and reusable. Um, they cost about $35, I think. Not, th not that expensive, uh, but they cut extremely well. Uh, they will eventually cut am steel. They cut everything else with flying colors. Uh, the half-inch regatta braid, essentially because of its bulk, took a little bit of effort. Um, but I have a lot of confidence in them because that very sizable rivet they got through it and the thick steel that they're not going to fail on me. Uh, they're relatively lightweight, uh, easy to carry. The jaws are not super far from the edge, so they're easy to get into, uh, to get the rope into and to use. So they're very usable. The next set is going to be depending on which one works better for you. I'm not going to recommend one more than the other, but the Benchmade Model 8 and the Boker Rescom came in. Uh, I'm still going to recommend them despite uh, some problems with them. This hook tool, I find, is just fundamentally less effective than a utility blade type uh, cutter um, because it puts tension on the bottom when they're probably already suffering from paresthesia or some other kind of like rope tightness related injury uh, or symptoms. Um, so they're, they're kind of tough to recommend, but I do want to recommend them. They're very popular, and they are sharp when they're new. They dull quickly. Uh, this one particularly, it dulled in the course of the test and kind of just surprised me how fast it dulled. Uh, <laughs> it also cut me. Um, so they, there may be a good backup tool. Um, this one, it might be able to slip into a pocket. This one clips onto you. So they have different kind of ways of storage. Uh, and that's why I say use the you should purchase the one that's better for you. Um, there's not a huge amount of difference, despite what rhetoric you may hear on Fat Life between the two. This one's slightly sharper. This one lasts longer without dulling. There is a um, 
sharpening policy on Benchmade. They will sharpen your tool for free uh, for life. Uh, you just got to mail it to them. So that's an advantage. The last one is the Kretscher Safety Boy Robbins. This is the oldest tool on the market uh, out of all of these. Uh, been around for a long time. It's a hospital-oriented, uh, I guess partially emergency-oriented, but mostly hospital-oriented uh, bandage and clothing cutting tool. Uh, very, very large and heavy. It weighs multiple times what any of these other tools weigh. It is recommended because uh, it is the consistently, most confidently, highest cutting performance tool in this list. Uh, it cuts through. It cut through anything uh, and continues to cut through anything. Um, one cut, flying colors. It, it, a very impressive cutting tool. Um, even that am steel rope was it was not much of a problem. It's it's a one cut thing through. Um, I recommend this to instructors as kind of a niche tool. Uh, if you are, or a seat may be like a dungeon monitor, if you are in a setting where you're going to need to cut somebody else's rope, you don't know what they're bringing with them, uh, you need to have a tool that is going to be able to cut whatever it is. Uh, this is a way of carrying something where you have a lot of confidence that you'll be able to cut it. There's nothing really on the market that that is small enough for shibari work uh, that it can't cut and that it can't cut very well. Other than that, because of its bulk size and the size, length of its blades, uh, it's not, I, I don't recommend it more than the X year for general purpose use in, uh, with a, one exception. If you're cutting AM steel, this one again might be more recommended, uh, but for anything else, I'm gonna recommend the X year more than that. So those are my top five. Uh, and that's kind of why I, or at least what I recommend them for, but getting into like a conversation of what I think you should look for in a shear, uh, that main fundamental thing is, will it cut the rope that you're using? Of course, a lot of people, uh, frankly, a lot of people are using jute and hemp, uh, and most shears will cut that. I still think that, um, you should generally avoid, uh, shears made by BDSM or rope people that if I can reach over and grab it. The only shear, if you see the test uh, that did anywhere near well enough was the uh, S&M shears. Uh, they actually did better, a lot better than I thought. For any general purpose, they'll work. But for the most part, I recommend staying away from uh, shears by BDSM vendors. That They're just all really bad. Um, most of the other tools cut the the basic ropes if you're using am steel get a really high powered cutter or a really sharp cutter the fact that these cut am steel i think is amazing um if you're cutting kevlar you're going to want to do probably shears over a cutter uh, just because kevlar cuts much better um is cut much better by shears um so that's the kind of fundamental one but moving past that a little bit um you, some things I think about is the ease with which you can get to the rope and get that rope into the cutting element, uh, which kind of contributes to speed, uh, is, is an overall kind of thing I look at. Um, reliability and confidence in a different number of situations, for instance, rope under tension, rope under a lot of tension, rope under no tension, that kind of thing, um, are all, are all considerations that I think uh, should be looked at a lot more than, uh, well, than I feel that they are. Uh, starting with the Kretzers, I, I mentioned their size and bulk. Um, to explain a little bit, these are several inches of blade, only a couple of inches, which are close enough to the jaws for rope. So their size and their bulk, and I'm going to do a little bit of a demo uh, that I've kind of recorded ahead of time. Getting into the rope is difficult with these, uh, which makes them less usable, less fast, uh, less reliable than a tool like the X shear. And to some degree, the X shear is less easy to get into rope than your common everyday shears. Uh, I just feel like the X shears strikes a very good balance, given they're not all that thick, but they're much stronger. Um, shears in general have the advantage that they open up very wide. So I recommend shears over like a cutter for shibari or for suspension work uh, because if you've got a hanging line, you can, you know, 
hook into it and then you know settle it however you need to easier than the small opening here where you would have to i'm assuming like land it aim to land it here and then drag it into the jaws to make the cut um which with practice was probably to be just as well right but there's less training less practice requirement uh to get a shear to work better in a suspension environment um for up against the skin use, however, the, the advantage of a tool like this, or even another version such as the jackknife uh, did very well, comes into play where you can simply push it up against the skin, it'll pull the rope into it, and it just pulls through it. Um, and because you're using a utility blade or a razor blade, it's designed to be dragged against that blade, it works just like a knife, it's gonna just uh, cut through it rather than uh, this, which essentially pulls through it um, in a very um, aggressive way that puts tension on the bottom. So there's a lot of advantage to this kind of tool. Uh, within these tools, I pointed out um, that the actual formation of the blade, uh, forgetting the auto is focused, uh, the actual formation of the blade is important and there's actually debris from that safety cutter test obscuring what I want to show but this for example the blades don't actually overlap like so instead they come together and then they're specialty design such that they go straight there's a straight hole between where the blades meet that hole looks minuscule but it's enough for a rope fiber to get through um, so this blade the Ontario ASEC, despite being very comfortable, it would have been my one of my number one recommended, I think. It doesn't cut well uh, because, uh, because of that design flaw. Jackknife just uses a very basic two razor blades sitting on top of each other and crossing, and then if a rope fiber goes between them, it's still up against a razor blade, and it still cuts, uh, and it still cuts very well. So the Jackknife uh, was a very good cutting tool. Uh, it's larger than the trilobite, and I think it's less wieldy, so it doesn't make the top five. Um, it's, again, that accessibility, usability issue. Um, so I like shears for suspension work. I like these line cutters for floor work. I always carry two, and these are going to be the ones I continue, I do, and I continue to carry the most. Uh, for some situations, I'm going to swap these shears out for the Kretzers. It's simply my rotation. Um, I hope that describes what to look for um, in a blade. Essentially, if you're testing out something, going through the effort to test it out ahead of time, and maybe even commit to using up a copy of it, um, is, is recommended. And it's another reason why I recommend, why I really like uh, and generally recommend things with a replaceable blade, because then you can use one up, swap it out, and you've got a brand new tool. Um, Versus like this is now dull and I don't know what to do with it other than look at it because I'm not going to get sharpened. Um, so that's unfortunate. I've got, oh dear lord, I've got two pieces of rope that are both done very tight. Uh, and so when we look at it, A, I've got clothing on. It's going to dig into my clothing. I'm going to be very careful not to cut this. If I need to get into this, it's going to be a process of getting in. You're typically cutting in one rope at a time. And it's not slow. Because it actually, let's not cut all the way through. Let's grab the Safety Boy Robbins. Safety Boy Robbins. I have to get through all of these lines pretty much to start the process and that's gonna make it difficult because the blades are so large. Now, the advantage is that power is gonna allow me to cut through faster, but there's a speed loss when I'm trying to get into it. Specifically for floor work, when you're often working with you know more pieces, oh my God, my leg feels better. Um, that's an issue. Trilobite, something, and this is pretty much true for 
all of these kinds of tools that use a razor blade, we're able to just drag it in. They have a huge advantage where they're able to cut through more rope quicker in this regard. Um, it's a much quicker process. They can get through a whole core set. That was a very tightly done. Um, my legs feel a lot better. In most situations, it's going to be much easier than that. And you can cut through a core set pretty quickly. Uh, and this has been my review. If you have any questions about any of the tools individually or want to, to know about a rope type, I've got more rope types that I excluded from any of the safety cutter tests, um, like MFP and all of that stuff, as well as some synthetic stuff like the the fake sisal or whatever it is. Uh, so plenty of ropes, uh, plenty of tools. Message me in the comments. Uh, otherwise, this has been my top five.